Um, Father, we just thank you tonight for your wisdom, your knowledge. We thank you for the blood of Jesus that covers every listener. And we thank you, Lord God, that these seeds will not be planted on dull or um, concrete ground. We thank you that their hearts are fertile for um, self-development. Their hearts are fertile for ingesting truth. You said that um, we must worship you in spirit and truth, and this is a form of worship. We worship you in the knowledge and wisdom of Jesus Christ. We even lift up every household tonight for the spirit of love and peace to enter in. We even thank you for the production that you've given us that eyes have not seen or ears have not heard the great things that you are bringing us into. And we thank you for the glory. We thank you for the glory. We thank you for the breakthrough. We thank you for the healing. Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Rapha, we thank you for your provisions. We thank you for the healing spirit entering in right now, and that every word that we speak tonight be engulfed through the spirit of the Lord. We thank you for the anointing that came to destroy the yoke of the enemy, and we thank you that your word says no weapon ever formed against us can prosper. And so, God, in the heavens we bind everything that's trying to come up against your people, and in the earth we bind them. We pull down every stronghold that besets itself over the wisdom and knowledge of Jesus Christ. No weapon formed against them shall prosper. We thank you that they are able to go on with their life today and tomorrow, knowing that you are with them, and that fear has no way in their life, that Illness and sickness are bound and broken, even mental illness and past life histories in the name of Jesus. We come up against even generational curses, and we pull down those strongholds over them and their families that they can productively work according to the wisdom and knowledge of Jesus Christ and work in this earth to bring a better balance and harmony in the name of Jesus. We thank you for food for our souls, and we thank you for the healing virtue right now that is taking place and that our flesh move out of the way that you can move in our lives effectively in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for the blood covering. We thank you, God, that everything that we speak and we declare in our lives it shall come forth, and we thank you that you bind the procrastination, even spirits of laziness. We bind those spirits that go back to hell in the name of Jesus. They have no place in your children's lives. We thank you for the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob dwelling with us, and we thank you, God, that we are armed and equipped with your work. We thank you that we're pushing on. Thank you for the aggressiveness of the saints this season, that they get the word and they're moving actively in your word to do what they were sent to do in this earth realm. Amen and amen. Okay, so the author advises leaders to practice self-mastery. Self-mastery, which means that whatever you find trying to get you down, you need to write it down because you are equipped to overcome it. If you think otherwise, then it will be so otherwise. You won't you won't overcome the, ta- the challenge. It will stay with you. All right? So the author advises leaders to practice self-mastery, which leads to greater levels of spiritual development for the betterment of themselves and their teams. Yourself has to come into divine order before you can effectively approach a purpose that you have in life. That means that if yourself is not in divine order, your money, your love life, your friendships, your relationships are all a fault because you have not mastered the disorder or dysfunction within you. Now, when you go to church, they may teach to you concerning your emotions. God's going to do it for you, and whatever you pray for, okay, no more lies, because the season of spirit is upon us. God is working with us the way that he did back in Joel. He said that our sons and daughters would prophesy, and because our sons and daughters would prophesy, even those that I teach as sons and daughters, or if they take on the word of God and they walk with me and the vision that I've had, they become sons and daughters, they will prophesy. They will see greater things than I've seen. They will understand the lessons that they are spiritually encountering. 
because as a child, you may have had a lesson where you put your hand on the stove physically and burned it, and it taught you a lesson. But as you excel in life, you get invisible lessons that you cannot see. And you cannot conquer them or overcome them until you meet with the spirit realm. Your father, mother, God in heaven, there is no way you can overcome. And we just come against the spirit of division. Because I hear spirit of division lurking around in, in, in this here call. And so this call is for for people to excel in their lives. I don't think anybody comes on here just to be on here. That's why the numbers are small. I'm good with numbers being small because there is a few that Jesus had, 12, that took on the world, and his name and the works are going on forevermore. Do you agree? So even in your house, if there's a spirit of division, you begin to use the word and you begin to speak. I bind it in heaven and I bind it in earth. The more you bind things that are not um, conducive to what you want in your life, the more you're going to see more of God's glory come in because you're taking authority over your life. You're not allowing your life to be destined by things and people. All right, so spiritual development, when practiced daily, allows the practitioner, because the practitioner practices. Even doctors are practicing. They don't know what they're doing. They're practicing. So if you take a doctor's word for it, you have um, diabetes. They could be wrong. And you're accepting whatever they're saying because you feel weak to the diagnosis. The, The word of the Lord says, You speak those things as though they are. So if we're not feeling well, we speak healing and we believe it. We speak healing and we believe it. By faith, it's already done in the spirit realm because we spoke it. And our our, our power is so great in our mouths and in our voices that it is setting the um, venue for the healing to come back. We just have to focus. All right? All right. So it says spiritual development when practiced daily allows the practitioner the ability to deepen their relationship with God, thereby understanding their own limitations, which can strengthen their inner man. How many times have you focused on what someone else was doing to you? How many times have we judged what others were doing? Rather than focused on our own selves, I know that I have. And so I stand corrected in the scriptures or by the scriptures. There's no correction for me without the scripture because my life is based on the scripture. Um, I learn how to live more effectively by reading a scripture a day. Um, Here on page 37, Ezra 5 and 17, it says, Now, therefore, if it seem good to the king, um, let there be search made in the king's treasure house, which is there at Babylon, whether it be so that a degree was made by Cyrus the king to build this house of God at Jerusalem and let the king send his pleasure to us concerning the matter. Now, the word, if it's it is conditional on the king allowing a search to be done in the king's treasure house. We see that the spiritual treasure to be searched for is one that exists at Babylon. And so that's um, in Lodibar. It's a place where the people are trying to come out of. It's like the exodus season and um, Moses is taking them out. However, there must be a searching for the treasure. Um, and I, I look at this here where talking about the treasures, we got to find out what treasure is in earthen vessels, which is who we are. The treasures that we have are yet to be um, found because many people are still looking outside of themselves for things to happen rather than going within. And so we have the prophetic word that says, speak those things as though they are. And that Jesus going to the cross, his testimony was made by with his cross experience, 
his testimony was made by his cross experience simply because it was already written in the Bible throughout the Old Testament that someone would come and they would be scorned and they would be mocked, they would be rejected. It was him. And so the word of God was proved and tried and tested, but he overcame it when he went to hell and he reappeared. He overcame death. And so his testimony is powerful, and it is given to the children of Israel, the, the children who we are, the ones that were in graft um, to come into uh, Christianity. Uh, the Jews rejected it. And so God gave it to, so to speak, the Gentiles. Uh, we can remove Gentile because I believe that throughout all of the world and time, God made us equal. Whatever love that we have, God has given it to us to give to other people. And so every one of us are value to God. Amen. And so the value is within us, the treasure. And whatever treasures are inside of you, they need to and want to come forth. Someone that is uh, frustrated. They think they're uh, frustrated by their job, by the situation, their living condition, but they're frustrated because they have not taken on the, the acts of God. They're not taking on the thought of God to actually work with the treasures within them. They're still working outside of themselves. You know, they have this emotional situation going on, and they actually look at the emotional situation rather than looking at what God is saying. God is saying that we are earthen vessels with treasures locked up within us. Who can unlock the treasure? I know that many people think or feel that God is. I dream a genie, but I and my father are one. John 6, the chapter 6 says it. I and my father are one. If you really care about learning, begin to write and take notes. Because if you don't write and take notes, if you're so busy that you cannot learn truly and get this in your mind, you're going to be at the same place. I and my father are one. I and my father are one. So if I and my father are one, all of the children of God and their father are one. But if you don't make a decision to take it for yourself, even sometimes violently, you're not going to ever move anywhere. I don't care to really deal with emotions and tell you you're going to get money when you have not grown up enough to take care of the money that God is going to give you. I don't care to minister to anyone concerning their emotions because your emotions is not going to get your breakthrough. Your, your breakthrough is going to come through your understanding and your wisdom. But you have got to receive it. And if you don't receive that you have wisdom and knowledge, it's in the Bible. Paul talks about it in 1 Corinthians 2 and 3. The other thing is, is that who are you as a Christian? Does someone have to tell you or remind you that you have wisdom and knowledge inside of you? Does someone have to tell you daily that you need to go within to get that wisdom and knowledge to unlock favor or, or uh, decisions and, and make the right decisions with wisdom and knowledge first before you go and make a decision on your own? The treasures in the earthen vessels are spiritual treasures. The treasures in earthen vessels are who we were before we came to this world and entered this body. And so it takes deep thinking in order for you and I to really get to the root and the harvest of the matter. You have to make a decision how far you're going to go for Christ. And for the rewards, how far is it going to stop you in the press? And, and you're going to become depressed. Is it going to stop you in the press and you're going to go further to receive the reward? What changes will you make in the press? Because, listen, press means pressure. The suffering saint will never, ever overcome suffering 
He will never escape it because it's a part of Christ's inheritance. When you go through suffering, it it debilitates or it begins to deliver you from the selfish uh, ways of man. You can go to um, Matthew 5 and read it until you get a greater understanding. Because if you have not become surrendered to God, you're going to continue to fight what is before you. Everyone is in a place of surrender. The world is going through chaotic situations. It's a testament to the word of God. A lot of people are saying that Christ is soon to come. As if Christ is going to come back here the way he walked the earth before. But I want you to get this. Christ in you is trying to birth through you. Christ in you wants to be revealed through you. That's why we have the word of God. That's why Jesus went to the cross and demonstrated. He did not do this so that his body would come back here and he would walk in the body again. He did, and the ghost was given up. He did this because his spirit would be able to involve itself in all of the Christians that took on and surrendered to him when they said, yes, I give my life to Christ. You got to wake up. Because some of the things that we've been taught are hindering our true understanding. We are, we are equipped with God within us. There's no God outside. There's no God up in the sky. Only God within us. So when you pray and you feel you're praying outside of you, you're praying wrong. Because you cannot pray to something. You have to pray within you. Which means that I know when I go within, I am my Father one. I'm meditating on that because I am my Father one within me. Moses, he's talking to the burning bush and he says, "Who, who are you? And he says, the Spirit of the Lord says, I am that I am. But the revelation in that is that God within Moses was speaking to him. The scripture is in telling to tell people what Moses seen from within himself. He's seen the burning bush because he's seen the fire of God within him. You see what Moses went through? It had to take fire. God had to spark fire within him. There had to be fire within his body to get him to the place of rejection every time he went to Pharaoh and told him, let my people go. There had to be a God within him. It could not have been a God outside of him that did this. How can you equate this to your life? Every time Moses went and he was upset because what what's going on here, God? He was speaking to himself. He was speaking to God within him. So if we continue to pray outside of ourselves, thinking that we are praying to God in the sky, we're wrong. Because we have the treasure of God within us. All right. Ezra 7 and 20, and whatsoever more shall be needful for the house of thy God, which you shall have occasion to bestow, bestow it out of the king's treasure. Give it out of the king's treasure. If we start at the first verse, it's almost as though though there is a cycle or pattern developed. There are precious stones that were first found. Then they were put into the treasure house of the Lord. After this, there is a search to be made for these precious stones, and the search is within the treasure house. Okay, I gave it to you plain. We then see that if there is a need, whether natural or spiritual, 
for the house of God, which individually and also corporately we are, that we are to give what we have found in our searching of these precious stones to the house of God from out of the treasure house. All right. So our treasures are to be given to the house of God. So I, I, I think it's seven or eight people on tonight. And so um, I'm giving to the earthen vessels and the treasures of God. The word I'm giving is to wake up and to stir up the gift in each and every one of you, to provoke you to move beyond your circumstances and your situations and see the authenticity of who you are. If I and my father are one, that's a powerful statement, but you have to get it for yourself because consciously people don't awaken all the time to the anointing or a word being spoken over them. They can wake up 10 years later to the word. They, they can wake up because they had some kind of challenge that really made them um, or shook them. Um, Matthew 13 and 52 says, Then said he unto them, Therefore every scribe which is instructed into the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is a householder, which brings forth out of his treasures things. So you can look that up. Study it for yourself. I find sometimes that people don't appreciate when you give them uttermost knowledge. So you don't have to study for yourself, too. But we have to remember the king's seers saw prophetically into the words of God. And so the words, what he's saying, as she's saying, is that the words began to speak to the seers and the prophets. The word of God began to open up to the prophets and the seers and show them how things really were, how the community was set up, how the 12 were walking, how um, the 12 tribes of Israel were set up and the purpose of their setup. You understand what I'm saying? Why they were giving gifts to 12 tribes in, in, in the name of Jesus. Because a lot of people think it's religion, but they don't understand. Again, like Rex came on a couple of weeks ago, and we had uh, tribes he was talking about there, and the communities were set up for the reasons of the profitability. So even when you look at profit, in the religious connotation, it's spelled P-O-R, I mean, P-R-O-P-H-E-T, but profits come to profit people. And if the people don't profit, it's not the profit's fault. It is the people's um initiative whether they take on the words and the knowledge to practice. Seers see. They see further than the the people that may be studying under them. Um, Seers may need guidance and instruction because they're new um, or they don't understand some of the laws um, of the spirit. So you have younger uh, seers that need instruction. But when you have seers that have grown up and they've experienced things, then they have people that come under them for instruction. Now, the instruction that I give is always to seek God because what God has taught me in the walk of seership and and, and prophetic gifting is that um, there's not one way that we're taught. Um, I'm taught more like Paul. Paul was not taught by any of the disciples of Jesus. He had a revelation, and that's where him and the Christ spirit met, and he was engaged from there on. And so the Christ spirit taught him, period. And he acknowledges that in the Bible. I think it's around Galatians 1 1, 1 and 11. And so to understand that scripture can help some people. And it's not to say that no one else can teach you. You have to know your anointing. You have to know where your purpose is. You have to know whether you're a dreamer or a seer and be honest with yourself. But being at one with God gives you the ability to see and have some capacity of gifting that you will need instruction with. Amen. So uh, let's see, where are we? Um, 
It says, we have to remember the king's seer saw prophetically into the words of God. So they actually saw what was happening. All right? It's like a story you're reading. And you begin to go into the story and you see it viv- visually. Um, and I can say that because I see like that. Um, I can see the kingdom and the king sitting on the throne. And how the prophets were around him, prophesying to him about dangers unseen and seen. Okay? Same with Moses. When he went in with Ramesses, they have movies. But if you allow your mind and all of you to go into the word of God, the revelation will come and you'll see what's really happening there. You won't have, you know, people won't have to tell you. Because the story will reveal itself to you, and you'll be able to use it for um, teaching others, but also teaching you in your life. You know, Deuteronomy says um, that he's given us the power to obtain wealth. But the people are not experiencing wealth because they still believe in a material God. And I prophesy that I am the Lord, your God, who gives you the power to obtain wealth. You know, I am the Lord, your God, Deuteronomy 8 and 10, who gives you the power to obtain wealth. I am the Lord, your God, who gives you the power to obtain wealth. When the Lord, your God, has shown you and has been teaching you how to obtain wealth, what have you done with this? You have to ask yourself, you see? Because even over further, I think it's in Deuteronomy chapter 11, he says that this is the day of the exactor and debt cancellation. You have no more owing to anybody. But the reason why people are not overcoming debt is because of their mindset. They don't believe this. They don't believe that I am the Lord your God who gives you the power to obtain wealth. They still see their master being their bills, everything that they owe. They still see the world being their master. I don't care what you say because your actions demonstrate it. When you overcome the fear of the taskmaster, then you will go over into the promised land. But until then, you will always be a slave to Pharaoh. God can give you the ability to say, let my people go as a leader, but my people have got to cooperate with Let my people go. All right. So faith. Faith is needed for accomplishing and producing present truth. What is present truth? I'm asking you guys a question. Present truth? Yes. What is present truth? Things that are taking place in the present that just so happen to be true? I don't know. Or like actually, um, I don't know. I guess the things that are taking place literally in the present moment but are truly that of God's prophecy, maybe? I don't know. Okay, yes. But what's happening right here, right now, is present truth. Because you shouldn't, no one should be distracted to look at anything else but what's going on right here in this meeting. And because anyone else is distracted distracted from this present truth, They're not getting the whole truth for this experience of awareness right now. All right? So present truth 
can be everything that you said, but to bring a person into present truth means that they accept that their awareness has been all over the place. And they need to be in the moment of where they are. If there's any distractions going on right now where you are, how can you actually get any truth that's going on around you? You would miss a word concerning debt cancellation because you're not in the present moment of truth. This is what's true right now for us that are on this phone. And if we have not come to an agreement with ourselves, then we still are struggling with some forms of double-mindedness because we're not here for the right reasons. That's an example, but it's true. Because when you hang up from here, you could go and think about your problems again if you want to, or you could just say, I've learned to trust in the Lord and go to the word of God and see Romans 10 and 17 says, so then faith, I believe what we talked about and discussed, faith comes by hearing. I heard the word and hearing by the word of God. I believe 10, Romans 10, 17, so then faith comes by hearing. I heard the word of God. I received the word of God. And hearing by the word of God, and it is established within me. And I continue to say this over and over again until my problem that was distracting me from the present truth is gone. See, faith, it says again, is needed for accomplishing and producing present truth. So if you have no faith, where you are right now and what you're going through, then you cannot accomplish any kind of truth. Your truth will be predicated on what you're experiencing right now. Hell, that's your truth, okay? You ain't doing nothing about it. That's what you got. And that's where your faith is because you keep thinking about it, right? So you have the power through the Holy Spirit to change the present truth that looks like I'm in hell by listening to a teaching that can transform your life. But you have to receive and you have to believe. That's the foundation of every Christian. Believe, receive, faith. All right. Any questions? Hello. Hi. Hi. I had a question about um, prayer. Okay. uh, That we touched on earlier. And you said that if we're praying to something outside of ourselves or thinking, you know, praying to someone or thinking God is up there, um, then we're doing it wrong because we need to look within and God is within us. Right. What about when you feel like lonely or empty or you can't find that within yourself well then that's why you come together and you fellowship like we come on and you know it's wonderful that you um, chimed in and you spoke up because that's when you're able to get the building and encouragement that you need when you come together with people and you're able to ask the question, it actually affirms you, right? And Mm -hmm. um, you're able to look within yourself even more and say, okay, I I got this or I'm getting it, or you're being directed to a place where it's going to help you. Um, That's why the church always says that fellowship is necessary because we won't feel alone. But You know, this is an experience that um, I want to also address that is necessary because sometimes people are put in a season of alone so that they can search themselves out. So I would advise everyone to take 
this information in. Because whenever God is dealing with us, we will be put in an isolated situation, and God is always with us. So isolation is good because if we recognize that we aren't alone, we begin to accept the spiritual man, the spiritual part of us. We can't do it when people are around. We won't do it when people are around. And so isolation can be a season for us to recognize that we need to begin to work on ourselves spiritually. And if we don't do it, we'll, we'll continue in that alone season because there are seasons. It's not forever. Um, alone seasons also come through us telling ourselves that we're alone. So we have to begin to speak differently into our own consciousness. You see, if I continue to say that I'm alone and I've been there, nobody understands me, nobody's there for me, yeah, 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 you know, um, I found myself um, dealing with the spirit of pessimistic um, of pessimism. I also find myself dealing with a spirit of depression, all right? Um, there's other spirits that I found that alone um, season was um, telling me, and why? Because God wanted me to combat them in prayer. You know, I bind up the spirit of loneliness. I bind up the spirit of rejection. I bind up the spirit of anger. I bind up the spirit of hatred. I bind these spirits that hold me. I bind up the spirit that speaks to my mind and tells me I'm nobody. I bind it, you know. And so the Bible tells us that whatever we bind in heaven, which is in our mind, it shall be bound in the earth, which is our body. In the beginning, God created Adam and Eve. And it tells us that he formed them out of the dust of the earth. So you know that the body is formed out of dust of the earth. And so this earthen vessel that we have is tricky. And the mind is tricky because of things over our lifetime that we've ingested from other people's words all around us. We begin to um, denounce, renounce the words that people have spoken to us. You'll never amount to anything. Because I am somebody. Shut up. I don't want to hear that no more in my mind. I bind you. You got to get, you know, you got to get really assertive with yourself before you can even master anybody else. Because if you take everybody's mess, you're going to continue to take it. But if you begin to master yourself and deal with yourself, that's a prayer, by the way. Shut up. I don't want to hear that no more. That's not who I am. Because you're talking to voices that you hear within yourself. Prayer is talking and speaking. Some people think that prayer is mm, formal. I had to put a dress on, and I got to get in, you know what I'm saying, formal attire, and I, I got to get in this position. Listen, God lives within us, so he hears, the Spirit of the Lord hears everything that we're saying, everything that we're thinking, because he is who I am. Can you get that? Can y'all grasp that? Because this is not just for her. This is beating the head of the devil because too many people have thought that the devil was outside of them. It's everybody. But we're only attracted to the devils that come to us or the bad relationships, the man that used me or the person that took my money because of what's inside of us. What's inside of us. Um, I don't feel like I'm worthy, cancel, cancel, of a good relationship. I do. And, and I keep on trying until I get the right one, until God sends me the right one, because um, the rejection is there for a reason. It's really for me to I, I identify with what is going on inside of me. You know, the alone time was for me to identify with the words that I was speaking, powerful. 
the, uh, the alone time was also for me to identify that God was shaping me and remaking me, and so he didn't want anybody else speaking in my life, which meant I am limited to the people in my life. But if I don't understand that, then how can I ever overcome it? You see, and I can never understand it if someone has not taught me or presented it to me another way because people are social and they think that they have to be around people all the time. It's not so. It's not so. Okay, so did did that help? Yeah, it did. Okay. So, any any other questions? So we just ask God to give us peace with where we are in the name of Jesus tonight. And we just ask for the blood of Jesus to cover each and every one of us, to empower us, to uh, move deception away from us by the blood and through the blood, to move, that the Holy Spirit will move by his power and by his might and the sword of the Lord we we'll begin to cut away anything that's holding or entangling us mentally, physically, and spiritually. We thank God tonight for the angelic host and the Lord of Saboa moving on our behalf. We thank you for the uplifting, for the uplifting and encouragement of the saints. But we thank you tonight, Lord God, that these seeds will go forth and produce a valuable fruitful harvest in their lives, that they will see how great they are, and you will begin to change the naysaying in their hearts and minds concerning themselves, the fear and the worry, into victories, that they overcome by the blood, they overcome by the speaking of your word and the testimony money that you've given them already by them applying your word to your their life daily that they will become victorious and i thank you lord god that they see they tried life one way but if they try life your way that greatness will develop and they'll see the victory in their lives in jesus name we pray we pray for the blessing of the lord to take them over and that as they sit under this here covering that they begin to sup on your word and they begin to see life transformation and changing situations in their lives because of the word of knowledge that they've taken in in the name of jesus through this word um it is so we agree amen and amen okay you guys have a wonderful evening and we'll um see you next week Have a nice night. Good evening. God bless you. Good evening. God bless you. Bye.